Hello, everybody. This is Manoli here with the Manoli's Musings podcast for March 30th, 2022. Uh, Wednesday, 2022. Deuces wild, baby. Deuces wild. Double deuces. That was my football number back in back in high school. My father. Double deuces. Great. Um, how you how you doing? How you doing? Everything okay? I'm a little. I've been through this. It's been a busy, busy week for me. Busy, busy week. Because I got this performance coming up tomorrow. I think I need to get I think I need to talk talk about it, you know, ahead of the time. So I'm recording this now. Even though it's 10 30 at night and I'm sitting here in my robe, just you know, probably gonna go to sleep soon because I I haven't got much sleep. But but you know what? It's not about me. It's not about me. You know what it's about? It's about you. You people. I'm doing this for y'all. I'm doing this for y'all. Isn't that scary? I'm doing it for y'all. I, I'm here to entertain. I'm here to here to share with you my my experiences, what's going on. So, I think the last time I I did a solo episode was last Thursday, and I didn't go out that night uh, because I had to work on my thesis, <gasps> the senior thesis, the senior thesis. It's due tomorrow. Well, for me it, it is, and I'm going to talk more about it. So I didn't go out on Thursday because, and it was, I, I got to say, it does hurt because there's only so many, so many more Thursday night, Thursday nights I have left in college to go out, you know, I hate to, I hate to give up a Thursday, but I had to do it. It had to be done. I made the noble sacrifice. I did, the, I did the noble thing. I had to part with my beloved Thursday and work on my thesis like the, like the nerd I am. Um, I did go out on Friday. And I went back to the uh, the CWP, the Carolina Western Pub, and they had a. I met my friends there, and they had a uh, they had a band playing. And, you know that you know their, their bands are usually all right. And not, they never they never some of them are good, none of them are great, some of them are pretty bad, but usually they're okay, you know. <laughs> um. Anyway, I go in there, I give them $5, whatever, and go in there, listen to this band. I just, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I've, I've gone there so much. It's just, I've I've heard this song so many times. So many times I've heard these songs. It's like, I, I can't hear it again. I cannot hear, what the hell is that song called? Oh, Life is a Highway. That's like the worst song ever written. I, I can, I could literally, I never ever ever want to hear that song again i mean what is good about it it's it's horrendous and every band plays it they play it every night in that place and it, i i think i have some animosity now for cwp for subjecting me to that song umpteen times all the money i spend in there they could at least you know cater to my taste you know because they, everyone should listen to me right <laughs> uh yeah life is a highway also the song about getting you know what down in dallas um can you say overplayed? I mean, my gosh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a funny, funny novel song. The first couple of times I heard it, I, like, I'm sorry, maybe I should rephrase it. The first 800 or so times I heard it. I think I've heard that song at least, at least, you know, multiple times every weekend since it came out, which I think was 2020. So I don't know what, I mean, Oh my gosh, it's a it's a funny song, but you ruined it. You just ruined it. You ruined the song. Okay? You you overplayed it. It's it's done, all right? Let it, let it rest, bring it back every once in a while. You know, play something else. And they never play any any like other classic country songs. You know, I like Johnny Cash, and if they do a Johnny Cash, the guy he can't freaking sing it cuz he has not a bass. On the rare occasion that they do do with Johnny Cash, it's always Folsom Prison, which is a great song. But again, it's kind of pointless if you have to sing it up the octave because you can't hit the low notes. So, you know what? They should just call me up there and I, I'll, I'll give them some bass. How about that? Oh, look at you, Manoli. You think you're a big shot? No, it's just I, I, I would prefer things to be sung the way they're supposed to be sung, okay? I'm not a big shot. I just, I don't know. I don't know, people. It's just... That kind of thing bothers me. And I don't know why they don't play some of like the rock country songs, like like Leonard Skinner. I mean, the Rolling Stones, they make better country songs than the people who do country today. I mean, you know, Dead Flowers and Sweet Virginia, those songs are great, man. Honky Tonk Women. Come on, this is a this is a no-brainer. 
These are great songs. Can you tell I like the Stones? Um, anyway, but I go because my friends like to go, and I wanted to. I wanted to be with them. I don't know why, by the way, because the one of them, <laughs> he was just kidding. But I, I gave it. You know, when you grow up with a Greek father, you know exactly how they guilt trip people, because they they are masters at the guilt trip. I mean, you've seen. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you know. With my big fat Greek wedding, when she she says, "I want to go to college with you," why you want to leave me? It's it's the same thing. It's very true to life. It's very true to life. I love my father, but he I mean he knows how to put on the guilt trip. So I've learned from the best. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So my friend, he tells me he's, <laughs> he goes. He te I text I text the two of them. I say, "Hey, are y'all going to CWP?" They're like, yeah, we're going to CWP. I'm like, okay, I'll probably be there. You know, I don't like to commit because I, I you know, if something comes up and and it's, it looks like I backed out. So I, it's always a probably for me. I'll probably be there. Maybe I'll show up. You know, you got to keep them on their toes, okay? You got you to gotta make them feel like when they see you, it's something special, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, so I texted him. I said, you going to CWP? He's like, yeah. And the one guy goes, hey, I'm bringing a girl. Please don't embarrass me because you tend to do that sometimes. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't want to embarrass you. I think I just not show up then. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. I'll just stay home. Stay home by myself and knit. <laughs> I'm like, you don't want me to embarrass you. And I, I, knew, I knew what he meant. It's just, I, I like to mess with people. I, I mess with my friends, you know. I just, I just. I like to banner with them. I go back and forth and I don't know. For it, He just, I don't know. It's nothing. I know what he meant. So I, I, I was just kind of leaning into it a little bit anyway. And so I don't know what, I don't even know where I was going with that. The point is, is that don't ever, you know, don't ever underestimate the power of a Greek guy to put the guilt trip on you. That's all I'm saying. Just you've been warned. Okay. We grew up, we grew up with, with our parents, my father, you know, he puts on, he's the master guilt tripper and he knows what he's doing. And, you know, I learned from the best. All right. Anyway, so I go to this freaking bar and I'm, I try to, I go out to order that it's like 1 a.m. And they're like, it's last call, last call. And I'm like, what, why, why is it last call? I, I come all the way out here. You, you're shaving an hour off of my night. You know, there's no, there's no other time to go somewhere else because those places are about to, by the time you get there, they're going to be closed. I asked the bartender, I said, hey, can I ask you a question? Because I I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm just not afraid to, to point things out. I'm very observant, you know. It's like, well, I, I'm going to ask, you know. I said, can I ask you a question? He's like, sure. He's like, I'm like, why, why are you close early here? He's like, well, there's no law that says we have to be open till two. I'm like, yeah, but aren't you losing money? He's like, not really. People aren't buying drinks at this hour. I'm like, well, what does that make me? Some kind of degenerate? <laughs> does that make me? I'm, I'm some kind of, uh, nobody's buying drinks at this hour. What if I was going to buy one? Would you, what about that, huh? I mean, I mean, what does that make me? How does that make me feel? I'm like, oh, uh, all right. Sure. Have fun. Yeah, so between the music and the 2 a.m. thing, I don't know, me and this place, you know, I used to go there like three nights a week, and I think I, I, I OD'd on it. And now it's just like, every time I go, they close earlier. They close earlier and earlier. It's like, sooner or later, they're going to be closing at, uh, at 10, 10.30. I digress. The next day, Saturday, I went to this birthday party with this guy who I met the week before at St. Patrick's Day. And, <laughs> and my, my friend invited me to go. And so I met them there. I went, I did the, the guy's great. You know, the guy's birthday was, I mean, this guy, I got to hand it to him. It was his birthday and he was grilling steaks for people. I mean, that, that's a good host right there. You know, have people over and then, you know, you, you're the birthday boy. Everyone's supposed to be doing things for you and you're out there grilling food for people. I was like, wow, look at this guy. This guy's freaking great, man. This is somebody, this is a real, this is a real stand up guy. Grilling steaks for people. I mean, he did a beautiful job, too. He cooked them perfect. It was great. That was a very nice birthday party. And you know what? This guy, <laughs> they, they had a pinata, right? And I, 
Oh, gosh. By, by this point, this guy, you know, it was his birthday, so he had been, you know, thoroughly, uh, how should I put it? He Let's just say he had, you know, a few birthday cocktails, so he was, he was feeling it, all right? And so they bring him out there with this piñata. I mean, they... <laughs> They put the blindfold on him. They give him a stick, and and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, jeez. And he, of course, he's swinging it around. People are jumping out of the way, trying not to get hit by this this guy. <laughs> this drunk guy swinging the stick. Anyway, so I'm standing off to the back. They hit this pin. He hits the pinata, and this liquid comes out. I'm like, what? That, that's weird. What what is that? It's like liquid comes out, and then. And then he keeps hitting it, and it this just keeps coming out. I'm like, I'm like, what, what is that? Like, oh, we filled it with cat litter. I'm like, Bleh. I'm like, what? Why did you do that to this poor man? I'm like, oh, that's sick, that's sick. The poor guy, it's his birthday, and you douse him with cat litter. That's just. <laughs> I felt bad for the guy. He grilled us all these steaks. It was his birthday. And then, you know, that's what they did to him. They, they covered him with cat litter in his piñata. Yeah, that's what they say. No good deed goes unpunished. No, it was, it was very funny. I felt bad for him. I, I really did feel bad for him. But it was kind of funny at the same time. You know. I'm like, uh, I'm like oh. Thank, thank God I wasn't close to the blast zone. That's all I can say. Because I would have been. Uh, I, uh, I wouldn't have been happy. But anyway, so I, 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 we leave there. We go out. We go out to this this bar rooftop. I talked about this place. Anyway, I'm there with my friends, and then we're up there. We're walking around. All of a sudden, I turn around. They're just gone. And apparently, one of them wasn't feeling well. They went home, which is understandable. So I was like, oh, well, now what? So I just I just hung out there by myself. And you know, I saw I ran into some people I knew. Yeah, you because know, said. I know too many people to be honest with you. It's, it's 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 a curse. I can't go anywhere. They all recognize me. They all want to talk to me. It's like it's like I mean, it's just what it's like to be a celebrity. People walking up to you all the time, talking to you. You can't go anywhere without being recognized. It's always hey, Cannoli. The ones that don't know my name. It's like oh hey, They're like what's your name again, Milano? I'm like <laughs> laughing and sobbing at the same time. This is my name. Like, I have to reduce myself to a freaking pastry. Cannoli. It's like cannoli with an M. They're like, oh, Manoli. I'm like, yeah. I'm, gonna start, I'm just going to start lying. I, actually, I started doing that. Like at, at the Starbucks or anytime I have to get my name to like, you know, get food or something. I just tell them it's Leo. That's my brother's name. I just say Leo. It saves a lot of time, you know. Because then they're like, Manoli, how's that spelled? I'm like, I don't want to spell. You just write something down. I mean, try your best. I'll, I'll know when you can't say it, that that's me. You know? <laughs> um. Anyway, so I'm walking around. Eh, I just like, I just, I ran, I walked around. I walked to another bar. Ran into some people I knew there, and I went home. You know? I can make my own fun. <laughs> and then... What was that? That was Saturday, Sunday. I don't think I, I don't think I accomplished one thing on on Sunday. Wow, I can't talk. Listen, 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 listen to him. He's going crazy. He's gone mad. He can't speak. He doesn't know what he's saying. Doesn't know where he is. He's disoriented. This is you're you're listening to the unraveling of a noble here. He doesn't know what day it is. The timeline that just runs together. It's this thesis, okay? I've been so busy working on this thesis. I, I know I worked on it Sunday, but I, I can't tell you what I actually did on it. But what it is is that I'm doing this recital tomorrow, the 31st, and it's about historical figures as represented through like opera and art song and that kind of thing. And so I had to write like a like a big report to go with it. And so, you know, I've <laughs> I've had four years to do it, so naturally I waited. I waited to start it about like two weeks ago on this paper, um, because I'm a genius. Uh, and yeah, so I've been I've been so busy working on this paper. I finally finished it today. Thank God, you know it's finally been done. But I mean that's that's why I'm going back. I had I literally had to write all the stuff down that I did because I can't remember what happened when unless I actually sit and really think about it. Because it, I just I haven't been sleeping much. I've been. I've, been, I've just been, this thesis has been occupying my brain, basically. 
Sunday, I, yeah, I don't think I don't even know what I did that day. I guess a whole lot of nothing. Um, Monday, uh, that's I think that's the day I talked to Sam. Oh, by the way, but I, I'm so sick. I'm already sick of hearing about the freaking slap. Okay, I know I talked about it last episode because that was the day after. But all the memes, it's just like, all right, enough, enough. All right, he slapped him. Get over it. It's over. It's over. Why do we have to keep it's like it's old news now? Why is this the biggest news story in the world? Isn't there more important things going on than Will, Will Smith and his freaking try to be this this big this big tough guy who's gonna go up there and slap him? Uh, keep my wife's name out your mouth. Uh, you know, it's like it's like, oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm, I'm over it. All right, you know, Chris Rock. I think he handled it the right way, and that's it. And since I'm right about everything, I know I'm right about this. Um, yeah, the joke was stupid. It was out of line. But you know what? You can't just go up and hit people. I'm sorry. And that's that. All right. Wow, I said I'm tired, tired of hearing about it. I wanted to talk about it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I just, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, I'm just full of contradictions today. So just, just go with it. All right. Um. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Oh, oh, I worked on my thesis all day, basically. I had I had class in the morning, I had to give a presentation that day because they you know everything piles up, right? So I had to give a presentation in class. And then I, I spent the rest of the afternoon working on my thesis. I had my fantasy baseball draft. Uh yeah, the league, the league, it should be fun this year. I, you know, I drafted. I think I had the first two picks last year that I did this year because I picked Juan Soto, and then on the the back end I picked uh, Walker Bueller, and those two. I mean, those two basically, but those two with some of the other people I had last year, I had by far the best record in the league. I, I ended, I but just you know, I, I think I lost four games. The one of them just happened to be the first round of the playoffs to a team that was not better than my team. I just got, I just got really unlucky. It was. It was a heartbreaking moment of my life, and that's what shaped me into the man I am today. This loss in the fantasy baseball, the fantasy baseball league. It just, if I had won that league, if I had just, if I had hit the high note, you know, if I had, if I had won, if I had won the karate tournament, if I had scored the touchdown, you know, things would be different. Things would be different. My whole life would have changed the trajectory. If I had won that fantasy league, I'd tell you right now, I would be richer than Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos combined. Um, yeah, so I missed out on that $80. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so we had our draft, and I don't know. I, I feel decent about my team. It's like, what is it? Juan Soto, Walker Bueller, you got Will Smith. You know, that, the baseball player, not... Not the, the the slapper uh, for the Dodgers. I always stack it with Dodgers because I'm so biased. I mean, not that. I don't do it because I like the Dodgers. I do it because they're good players. But I think I have like four, four or five Dodgers on my team. Um, I'm biased, all right? Yeah, I admit it. I'm biased. I'm biased towards things that I like. I'm biased towards the Dodgers. I'm biased towards, I don't know, things to to do with the Sopranos or opera singer that I like. Yeah, I am biased. Well, I'm a human man. What am I going to do? You know, I love my Dodgers. I want, I want to, it makes them, it makes the games more entertaining when you got some, some, something invested in it other than being a fan, which is enough sometimes. And then when they start doing bad, you're like, Ugh. but that's another thing. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I guess during this draft, I just, I got, I got like, I was thinking so much and I, I got hungry. And so I just, I didn't even really have any real food here. I just started eating a bunch of junk. I mean, do you ever eat something and you're just, afterwards, you're just like, why did I do that? And you're just, just sitting there all miserable. Your, your stomach feels like, feels like it's going to explode. And you're just sitting there like, oh, for God's sake, why did I, why did I do that to myself? Why? Why did I stuff myself full of this junk? That was me after that. And I had I had an exam th this morning, so I'm like, oh. And so I just went to lay down, and I passed out for about 
I set an alarm. I don't know if I actually woke up with the alarm, but I, I probably slept for about three hours, three or four hours, and I got up like, oh gosh, that must have been, it must have been like 4 a.m., 4, 4 or so, and I just got up, I started studying for this exam, and uh, yeah, I, I studied all the way through. The, the, I had to take the exam, like, it was at 10.50 was the exam. I did take a little nap, like, some at some point mid-morning, just because I was, like, I was, like, falling asleep at my desk. I'm like, all right, I gotta get, I gotta take a little power nap. And I just, <laughs> it's not like I slept properly. I had the lights on. I just, I literally, I just, I, I, I looked, I turned to my bed, and I just fell face forward and just slept for, like, an hour or so. <laughs> And then my alarm goes off. I wake up. I'm like, what's going on? And my hair's all disheveled and I'm all sweaty. It's freaking gross. I mean, you know, you can always tell when it's exam day for any class because everyone walks in there looking like they they just went, you know, I, I don't know, dumpster diving. <laughs> and they came and they took this exam. They, they, they don't, they're not shaving. Their hair's all askew. Their eyes are sunken. You know, they're bloodshot. It's it's really awful, actually. It, 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 I mean, it's it's mostly our fault because you know we could we could do it the right way, but a lot of us just choose to. I don't know. We just choose to do it. You know, we choose to stay up late or get up early, and that's that's how we. You know, you you pay the price. That's all I'm saying. You go in there. Your your clothes are all ratty. You know, they're all they're all wrinkled, disheveled, and you're you're just. You're like, you sit down to take the test. You just, you just, you, you like, you like have all this stuff in your brain, and you just, you just vomit it onto the page, like word vomit or whatever it is. I mean, thank God the exam was not difficult. I'm not worried about it or anything. And so, and I studied a lot. I mean, I did, I did what I had to do. It's not like it wasn't effective. It was just, yeah, I, I barely got any sleep. So the rest of the day, I'm like. Ugh. You know, it's all angry Manoli, grumpy Manoli, and I, I, I don't know. Somewhere between my sixth and seventh cup of coffee for the day, <laughs> I think I'm exaggerating, but, you know, I might not be. Uh, I went on Reddit, which I know that's the first mistake, right, going on Reddit. And, you know, I, I just got to say, the people, people are so freaking critical about everything. It's like. It's like I the, all the things that I love, the fan base is just horrible for. I love Star Wars. The fan base is toxic. I love opera. The fan base is it sucks uh, most of the time. Not most of the time, but some of the people, the more outspoken ones, are just that the, they just don't know what they're talking about, and they think they know everything. And I, you know, and then it's like the Sopranos. It's like these people, they think they're so smart because they they. It's like why do the things I love have to be, be wasted on these freaking idiots? You know. And it's a Sopranos thing, and they're always so negative. They're so negative, and they're talking about. There was this this other podcast. Well, this other podcast is much bigger than this podcast, but it was called the Talking Sopranos. Okay, and it was two of the best actors to the show, most two two series regulars. You know, that were you know great characters, beloved characters. They said they said you know what, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about you know our experiences filming the show. You know, they hadn't seen it since it aired, and so they wanted to talk about it and share their experiences. And, you know, just to, just to you know, share share their love for the show, you know, how big, how, how it impacted their lives and how, you know, they interact with the fans. And I got to tell you, you know, it was a nice thing that they did. I listened to every episode. I thought it was great. I thought they did a great job. It was it was great to hear their stories and just to, just to hear their banter going back and forth. I mean, these actors that you... They're the show that you've loved for, you know, however many years. I mean, I didn't start watching it naturally, you know, as a kid when it came out, but I started watching it when I was in my teenage years. I've probably seen it five times by now, which I know is rookie numbers for the Reddit people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, you know, they did this nice thing, and the people on Reddit, they they just, they bash it over and over and over again. They're like, like they don't know what they're talking about. They should talk about this. They should have a different people do this show. It's a big disappointment. You know, I don't like I don't like Steve Sharippa and Michael Imperioli. You should you should fire him. And you know, you could tell that they don't like each other. It's like it's like whoa. It's like why are y'all so critical about this podcast? I mean, if you don't like it, don't listen to it. But no, they just go on and on and on and on and on. 
And it's like the show, the, the, their podcast ended like, I don't know, months ago now. And then people are still complaining about it. They're like, like you're talking to Brando sucked. I could do a much better job. You know, they didn't go in depth enough. They didn't talk about this theory or that theory. It's like, yeah, it's because they were actually there. They were actually there. They filmed the show. They know better than anyone else what the circumstances were like on the set. They know better than anyone else what, you know, about the show. And you're going to sit there and tell, you know, say that, you know, that they, they don't know what they're talking about when they lived it. It's ridiculous. It's like, they're like, it's like, if you hate the show so much, just don't listen to it. Why do you, I don't understand why they have to revel in this misery for this podcast. I mean, it's a harmless thing. It's a freaking podcast with, yeah, at worst, it's a harmless diversion. At best, it was pretty entertaining and insightful, I have to say. But no, they just they keep going on and on, even when it's over. And I, I, I said so. I love to comment. I'm like, like, are y'all ever going to stop complaining? I mean, it's like, quit complaining. They complained about the podcast. They complained about the Sopranos movie that came out. It's like, if you don't like something, just I don't understand why you just don't put it out of your mind. Why you got to keep bringing it up and bringing it up? And then everyone else is like, yeah, the show's stuck too, man, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, you get, you get on the best show ever made, and then you make your own podcast, and then you can talk, you know? It's just ridiculous. The, the people. And then the Star Wars fans, I mean, they're they're insane, Most of, a lot of them. And they're just nuts. Anytime that somebody deviates slightly, the tiniest deviation from what they think is Star Wars or what they think Star Wars should be, it, it's a complete, complete and utter meltdown. Like, they, that freaking Last Jedi, I mean, I didn't think, you know, I, I thought it was an okay movie. I didn't like all of the parts of it, but you know what? And and I, I didn't like the episode nine, and so I, you know what I did? I haven't watched it since it came out. I just put it out of my mind. And, you know, these people, I saw a video that was released, like, The Last Jedi, by the way, came out like five years ago, okay? I saw a video that somebody posted the other day. It was three and a half hours long talking about why The Last Jedi sucked. It's like, if that doesn't sum up the toxicity of this fan base to make a video just complaining and moaning and groaning about a freaking movie of all things that's an hour longer than the movie itself, the, the movie that came out five years ago, it's like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Just forget about it. I don't, these people are nuts, man. And, you know, it, it, every time that a TV show comes out, they complain about that, too. The freaking Book of Boba Fett. I, I liked every episode, but no, they had to, they had, they complained about that. They complained, oh, Boba looks old. Oh, Boba, Boba should be doing this. Boba should look like that. Boba, uh, you know, they, the special effects weren't as good, you know. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, do y'all ever stop complaining? It's like nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's like you people. I mean, it's a freaking show about about laser swords and aliens and like it's it's a freaking kids thing, okay? And I I, I can admit that it's aimed towards kids primarily. Yeah, there's stuff that that adults can also enjoy, but the target audience is for children. There's a reason I can sit down with my little brother Leo, who's five, and get the same enjoyment out of it. That he does, you know? Just put it out there. But no, it's like life or death for these people. And it's just, it's crazy. I, I don't understand it. And then, you know, going, and then the opera people, I, I don't even know how to start with these guys. It, they're always, they, for some reason, a lot of them, they think because they listen to opera that they're, they're all of a sudden they know everything. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Every time, every I, can't, I kid you not, every time I leave a comment about a singer that I like, or I go to a video about a singer, it's always the same thing. It's always like, oh, but so-and-so was better. It was not as good as so-and-so. It's like, if you like so-and-so so much, go on their video. Why do you got to ruin my enjoyment or something? Why do you, why do you have to bring this this other singer down? Because you, oh, they're not as, oh, they're, they're not as good as, you know, Madam so-and-so and the, Blah, 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 blah. And I'll tell you why. They're, they're never right. It's always a bad take. Um, it's like, all right, if you like the other person so much, go watch their videos. If it, it's like, if you don't like the talk of Sopranos, don't listen to it. If you don't like The Last Jet, I don't watch it. And if you don't like a certain singer, stay the heck off of their videos. I don't understand it. 
I don't go, I, there's plenty of singers I don't like, and I, I just, I try to put them out of my mind. I don't go on there saying, oh, this person sucks, and here's why, because it's pointless. It's a stupid remark. It's irrelevant. And you know what? I, I, I've had it, really. And then, and then it's always like, you know, they're like, well, I have a right to an opinion. I'm like, yeah, you have a right to an opinion. You also have a right not to be a freaking jerk, but I think you should exercise that right. It's like I left a comment, I don't know, like eight years ago on a video of, of Samuel Ramey singing Why Do the Nations? And you can find it. And <clears throat> this guy comes on there. I, I said, Sam Ramey, he did it so well. Blah, blah, blah. I admire him so much. Something like that. This guy comes on here. Well, Sam Ramey, he's, you know, he's not as good as, you know, so-and-so. And, and, you know, he's a baritone, which is idiotic. And I'm just like, really? And I, I responded. It's a, it's a good thing that I, I, don't, I really couldn't care less about what you have to say about anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why can't you just let me be in peace i didn't ask you for your opinion it's like, he's like well, you you're you can't you can't participate in civilized debate i'm like yeah i didn't want to debate i wanted to enjoy this video this fantastic singer without your input thank you very much and you know the people they think i won't respond respond for some reason i always do it's always funny whenever they try to <clears throat> They try to come up with like objectively bad reasons why Maria Callas was a bad singer. Hey, guess what, people? It doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, what are you gonna what are you gonna criticize? You're gonna criticize the legato. It was perfect. Her coloratura was perfect. Her interpretation was, you know, you know, absolutely beyond what any human should be able to do. It's not like she had a small repertoire. She sang almost everything. You know, all the all the major soprano roles. Um, yeah, what are you going to criticize? Her diction was perfect. Uh, she had a big range. I mean, what what is there to criticize? And so they're like, they're like, well, her career was short. I'm like, yeah, you know whose career was short? Alexander the Great conquered the world like 30, 30 something, like 32, or I don't know what when he died exactly. You know whose career was short? It was Mozart died at 35. You know whose career was short? It was Sandy Koufax, you know, arguably the greatest pitcher of all time. Are you going to go up the Clay Kershaw and say, well, you're no Sandy Koufax. No, you're not. Because Clay Kershaw is also fantastic. And these people, they're like, her career was short. It's like, yeah, she started with making a living sing when she was 15 years old. How many people can you say that for? And she wasn't singing, you know, simple stuff there. She was singing complicated stuff. You could say her career short because half of it wasn't even recorded because it was so it was so early. And that's how long she, she had been singing forever. The woman sang every major role by the time she was 30, basically, which is a huge achievement. <clears throat> and then they want to say, well, I don't like her voice. I'm like, well, you know what? That's your opinion. But, you know, that's not a, it's not a, it doesn't make her a bad singer because you don't like the way her voice sounds, which I also don't understand. I never had a problem with her voice. But that's what they have to go to because there's no objective reason as to why Maria Callas is bad, in my opinion. And now, so th there you go. You know what? And then, you know, the people, also the people that want to critique my singing, it's like, yeah, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but I, I fully aware of the fact that I'm a freaking amateur and uh, I'm 22 years old. And, uh, you know, I sing for fun because it's a good hobby and I enjoy it. And I, yeah, this is a hobby for me. It's not my field of study. I do it because I enjoy it because I love music. And I do it because, you know, it's it's something that I just enjoy doing. And they're like, they're like, oh, you can't, you shouldn't be singing this, and you need to work on your delivery. And like unsolicited comments from the freaking peanut gallery. You probably can't sing, you know, I don't know, you probably can't sing happy freaking birthday. They're going to tell me this and that. It's like, yeah, I know. Unless you have some, you know, helpful criticism that would, that would actually, you know, be useful to me, then you know what? Uh, I don't want to hear it. I really don't. <laughs> And it's not just me they do it to. I mean, they do it to, you know, great singers. They're like, they, they got to poke holes. They're like, oh, he did this wrong, and she did this wrong, and she's not as good as this person, and he's not as good as that person. It's like, you know what, why don't you freaking try it? Why don't you try singing, you know, I don't know. Why don't you try singing Norma or Abigail or or Filippo or I don't know. Why don't you try it? I'd, I'd love to hear you try it, you know? And I'm not saying that you can't criticize and not, you know, not be a professional in the field. Of course you can. You have a right to do whatever it is that you want. But at the same time, it's like, if unless you have something useful to say beyond this isn't good, 
or she sucks, or blah, you know, this ridiculous comments, then you know what? Uh, I don't want to hear it. Oh, wow. Wow, I'm nice today, aren't I? <laughs> but yeah, it's just like people are so negative. Why can't you just say something positive? Why can't you just focus on what you like and just shut the rest out? You know, I like the original Star Wars movies the best. And so I watch those the most. I like some of the prequels. I don't really care. I like some parts of the sequels. I don't really care for the last movie. So I haven't watched it since it came out. And, you know, it's like it's TV, too. It's like I don't I don't care for the office. So I just don't watch it. I don't go out and complain about it. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't really. Uh, it's just I don't understand it. People, they just, they got to feed off the negative. Why can't you just focus on what you like? Like what you like. Like what you like. Don't be one of these pundits that go around, the so-called pundits that go around thinking they know everything, you know, poking holes and everything. It's just, it's not entertaining. And it's not, it's not helpful. And I don't find it intelligent 99% of the time. You know, that's just me. Yeah, you have the right to do it, but you know what? I, it's annoying to me. And I, I'm going to, uh, that's it. All right. Anyway, so what did I do today? Uh, I finished my thesis, actually. Well, what happened was I, I went and took this exam. I had to go straight to my voice lesson. I was all... <laughs> I, had no, I was all messed up because I didn't sleep. And I was all... I was all... I, I looked like I, I... I don't know. I looked like I just... I have been... I, I don't know. I just looked... I, I looked like crap. I looked like crap when I went to this voice lesson. And so I, I ran through my program. And I had to get gas at the gas station, which is already depressing enough nowadays. Anyway, so I pull around to a pump and this lady is pulling up, you know, like what happened was there was one empty, like adjacent for me. So I turn around and I come facing in one way. She's coming in the other way and she freaking pulls. I mean, you see, I'm trying to pull up to the pump, right? She pulls her car like all the way up into my space. And I'm just like, do you mind? Can't you move? To quote uh, Richard Lewis from Curvy Enthusiasm. Uh, Do you mind? Can't you move? And it's just like, I'm like, why Why do you have to do this? Like, why can't you? You see I'm trying to pull in here. It's a wonder I didn't rip the pump, the, the nozzle out, trying to get it to my, my fuel. What do you call it? The gas tank. And it's just, I'm like, my car was like way back and hers was way forward. I'm glad she had all the room in the world. Thanks a lot, lady. It's like, why can't you just be, I mean, what, I mean, just pay attention, please. And then I went, <laughs> it's like, you gotta have etiquette. Okay. You gotta, you gotta be aware of your surroundings. You gotta, you gotta try to, I mean, there's this common courtesy people. I mean, my gosh. Um, Anyway, so I went to the car wash that they had there because my car had a bunch of pollen on it, which is great for a singer with allergies. You know, you really want all the pollen, right? Um, anyway, so I pull in and I sit there and sit there. I'm like, where's the, where's the dryer? Where's, where's the, where's the dryer? And this thing comes down, this bar. It had like, it, had, it was a dryer, but it came down to where it was like, just like six inches above the hood of my car. And the thing starts moving towards my windshield. I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing's going to crash through my windshield. It's dryer. I'm like, I got nowhere to go. You can't get out of the car wash because it's, I mean, people have died trying to get out in the middle of the car wash. It's true. And I'm like, I'm like this thing's going to smash through my windshield. I'm going to have glass all over me. This is all I needed today. I'm already bent out of shape because of the Reddit pundits and I test to the lady at the gas pump. And now I, I got to deal with this car thing. This thing's coming towards me and it stops before it gets to my windshield. And it raises up to like, I don't know how it knew like the height of my car. Like it must have a sensor or something. Like this is amazing. This technology they have here at the car wash at the gas station. This is amazing. It raised up and it dried the rest of my car. And I even have to, I even have to do that thing where you pull forward and you're trying, you know, you start off slow because you want to dry it off. And then the, the timer starts going down. You're like, like oh, I got to I got to dry off the back, too. And you just it's like the front is dry. The back is dry. dry it dried off the whole thing. It was amazing. I mean, what a great experience at the car wash at the gas station. It, it, it really brightened up my day. That technology that we have. Achieved. <laughs> this is what this is humanity's greatest achievement. It's this, this dryer at this gas, this car wash gas station. 
gas station car wash. Can I talk? No. Can I sing? Maybe sometimes. Not according to some. Um, yeah, so then I went to the grocery store because I don't know why. I, 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 I told myself I was going to go home and take a nap, but then I didn't. I decided to go to the grocery store because I was freaking starving. Um, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. I ran into somebody I knew there. I don't like seeing people I know at the grocery store. You know why? I don't want people knowing what I'm buying. And it's not like I was buying anything, you know, beyond the pale. It was just, it was, <laughs> it's like I had toilet paper in there, paper towels, and, and they're like, oh, what's this? And it was like, <laughs> they had Stella on sale. It's like, it's Stella. They had it on sale. And they're like, oh, my God, okay, it's good to see you. It's like, it's always whenever you're buying, like, toilet paper, that people got to walk up to you. And they're looking at your car. And it's like, it's like, I enjoyed seeing the person. Don't get me wrong. They, you know, they're, they're you know, I've known them for a while and it was nice to see them, but at the same time, I'm like trying to hide the, the toilet paper and the, the... <laughs> oh gosh, it's always <laughs> the grocery store. It's always an experience, isn't it? And I came home and I knocked out my thesis. I finally got it done all 50 pages. And I'm like, you know what? I'm hungry. And what did I do? Yeah, I went, I left after that. And I'm like, I'm going to go get some sushi because I love sushi. All right. Sushi is one of my things, man. I just adore it. I go to this place I go to. They have fantastic sushi. And it's, it's sitting there. I finished my thesis and I'm all I'm all happy. I'm on cloud nine. Anyway, so I order these two rolls and the lady comes out. And one of them's wrong. And she's like, like, oh, my gosh, I gave you I gave you the wrong roll. Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't think this is a samurai roll. She's like, no, that's a raptor roll. And I'm like, well, what's the raptor roll? She's like, it's shrimp tempura, and it has some seared tenderloin on top. I'm like, well, that's interesting. And she's like, you know, if you want to just keep it, and I'll bring you your other roll. And I'm thinking, I'm like, am I really going to eat three rolls of sushi? And then I'm thinking, it's like, this is a gift, all right? This is a gift for your, your 50 pages of hard work on your thesis. And I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave it here. And then, you know, when the third roll comes out, if I can't eat it, I'll take a box. I knew slash I ate it all. And you know what? I enjoyed it. And you know what? I, I you know, I worked on it hard on this thesis. I got a big day tomorrow. I, I don't feel bad about it. I really don't. It was delicious sushi. I mean, how, you, how can you turn down free sushi? And that's like turning down a free trip to the moon. I mean, these things, these things, they only happen so often in your life when you have these opportunities to take it to the, uh, take, Get something for free, especially something as wonderful as sushi. So I took the opportunity. I came back. I fell asleep because I, I was tired. And I woke up. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do at you know, 1030? And I'm going to record this freaking podcast. And so here I am. Uh, I got my performance tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm looking for more guests to come on to the show. You know, wish me luck. And now I'm going to upload my performance to my YouTube channel. So check that out. Um, and yeah, uh, other than that. Uh, you know, things are going great. I'm really happy to be done with my thesis. I'm happy that I'm going to get to perform tomorrow for my friends and my family. And it's, I think it'll be great. And I'm excited to share it with you. Unless you're one of the annoying pundits. And, you know, uh, maybe you should just stay home. But, no, I'm kidding. I, I watch if you want, you know. I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate, you know, your concern. And I appreciate the people that are going to come tomorrow. And I appreciate the people listening to this podcast. Okay. I really do. This is just one big circle of love. You know, it's me and you versus the world, people. And we got to say it like it is. We got to stay strong. This is the Manoli's Musings family. You're my family now. Listen to this podcast, all right? And with that, I bid you adieu.